The most common question I get is which bandsaw blade should I use with my AccuSlice system? I get that question at least two or three times every week. And it really depends on a number of factors. Typically when I'm cutting these strips of wood that are less than two inches tall, anywhere from you know, 12 inches to 30 inches long, I typically like to use a 10 teeth per inch, half inch wide blade. Uh, and I've been using the Timberwolf blades for a number of years, but I've also used Carter blades in the past too. Uh, I don't like the carbide blades that are like three to four teeth per inch. They get very rough cut, plus the kerf's very wide on those blades. So I prefer staying with a, you know, a thin kerf blade. I said the Timberwolf blades are half inch blades have a kerf of 45 thousandths, so you don't waste a lot of wood. And for most times, using that uh, 10 teeth per inch on these two inch blades, that works pretty well. But it doesn't work in all cases. There's cases such as when I was cutting this, uh, this Produk and some other resinous woods, these resinous woods tend to come up the blade more quickly. So in that case, I usually go to a coarser blade. So I probably cut these with a, you know, a, a six or an eight teeth per inch blade and then I ran these through my board sander to clean them up. I never run my boards through the board planer anymore like I used to use when I, when I used to use the fence. Uh, there's no need. The, the boards coming off the AccuSlice system are perfect. They don't need to run through the planer. But I do sometimes run them through the board sander uh, just to get rid of some uh, minor saw marks and in particular if I want my boards to be exactly the same thickness. You know, coming off the exercise system, I can get accuracy within two or three thousandths of an inch. But if I want one more accurate than that, if I'm making a dizzy pattern and I want the left and right side to be exactly the same, then I'll run them through the board standard to get them exactly the same thickness. And that can get them within, you know, one, maybe two thousandths at the most uh, variation between the, uh, the various boards. So when I'm cutting boards less than two inches tall, I'll use a half inch wide blade, ten teeth per inch. If I'm cutting boards from two inches up to, say, five inches, I'll use eight teeth per inch. Again, rake tooth, half inch wide blade. If I'm cutting boards from six inches up to a foot, I use a six teeth per inch. Again, half inch wide blade, uh, rake tooth design. Uh, anything over 12 inches, I probably go to a four teeth per inch blade. But I never use the carbide tooth blades. I found I get, actually get a rougher cut and I get better results from just a standard rake tooth design blade. You're always compromising teeth per inch versus, you know, blade length. The more teeth per inch, the smoother the cut. But the more teeth per inch, the faster the blade comes up and the shorter the blade length. When I was cutting these boards for this uh, dizzy clock project I'm working on, these were about five and a half inches wide by almost a foot long. I used a six teeth per inch blade to cut these boards. And then I did run these through my board sander to get the uh, saw marks out. So again, it depends on the type of wood you're, you're cutting. If you're using a, cutting a resinous wood, uh, such as paduk or you know, uh, rosewood, you may want to go to a coarser blade. Uh, some of the harder woods, you know, finer tooth, drier woods, well, you can use the finer tooth blade. And again, the wider the board, the less teeth per inch. Now, I'm working on these discs, and I made these laminated discs, and each disc, these contain 85 layers of wood, about uh, two and a half inches thick. And again, putting this back on the bandsaw and slicing it this way. There's a lot of glue. All these boards are glue with epoxy. So again, you have a lot of glue in there, which is gonna gum up your blade. So I started off, I started off here with a 10 teeth per inch blade. This section of the video demonstrates the actual real time cutting of the first disc from that laminated block. And this was again cut with a 10 teeth per inch blade, half inch wide. And I said this is actual real time running speed. I did not, did not speed this up. So you can see how slow I really cut when I'm uh, cutting these uh, boards and also laminated disc. Because the slower you cut, the smoother the cut. And the first couple cuts were beautiful. I got some beautiful, nice cuts on there you know, cutting all these discs. But after about the 32 discs, the last disc, I start getting these burn marks. This is the last disc being cut off that laminated board. And you can see smoke coming out of the you know, board at the bottom near the bandsaw blade. And this is actually being run in real time. So this shows you how slow I normally cut my board. And when you start getting burn marks, and you start smelling smoke on your blade, or you see a little bit of smoke coming off, uh, or it's getting hard to push the board through the a bandsaw blade, that's because your blade is dull. 
And I change my blades pretty frequently. As soon as I start seeing some shadow marks, I change my blade. So I did these with a, a 10 teeth per inch blade. I got, I said, 32 discs cut from this, those boards. I went to a, an 8 teeth per inch blade. And again, starting off, I got some beautiful, nice cuts on that system, with that uh, bandsaw blade. Uh, and I went through and I actually got 60, 64 discs from that. But by the time I got to my 64th disc, I'm getting the same burn marks and shadow marks. So it's, again, it's time to change the blade. So now I'm going to be going to a 6 teeth per inch blade, which is probably what I should have used in the first place. Uh, when you all have these with all this, you know, epoxy and the glue in the, in the joints, it comes up the blade uh, pretty quickly. When I was uh, working on the uh, the large Dizzy Bolt project that I made a couple years ago, those uh, uh, laminated discs were 12 inches tall. And I was going through a blade after every 12 cuts. I mean, it was really chewing up the blade. I normally don't use the three-quarter inch wide blade for ripping boards. Uh, a half inch wide blade has a kerf of 45 thousandths. A three-quarter inch wide blade has a kerf of 55 thousandths. So you lose more wood going to a three-quarter inch wide blade. But when I'm using the Accu wedge for making the wedges, for doing segmenting, I always use the three-quarter inch wide blade because you need that extra strength from the three-quarter inch wide blade. When you're cutting wood, you know, with the grain or across the grain, you get no blade drift. But when you start cutting across an angle on a board, you have more resistance on one side of the blade than the other. And as a result, that causes that blade to move very, very slightly. But if it moves a tenth of a degree for making a wedge with the Accu wedge, That'll give you inaccurate uh, wedges for your project. So by going to a three-quarter inch wide blade, you get more strength, the blade's under more tension, and has less chance of, of moving and warping on you. So I always use a three-quarter inch wide blade uh, for uh, making wedges for uh, segmented wood turning. And I use either a 14th that's a preference, but I also can use a 10 teeth per inch blade. The type of wood you're cutting will affect what you're doing too, as I mentioned. Resinous woods come up the blade more quickly. And when I was cutting these boards, I actually cut a piece of, I think it was Red Heart. And one board, I made like 10 slices off it, took out, took out the blade completely. So I mean, it, not there was sand in the wood or what, but it just totally destroyed the blade. So again, it varies uh, with your wood. You're always compromising teeth per inch versus smoothness of cut versus life of the blade. The more teeth per inch, the smoother the cut. But the more teeth per inch, the faster the blade comes up. Less teeth per inch, you get faster cutting, you get you know, more, more saw marks on your board, and you made the run through the board sander to get rid of the saw marks. It is, a, it is amazing when, it, when a blade is brand new, and I, I showed it in some of my videos, when you make the first cut, it just breezes through that board. No, no resistance, nice and cutting. As you start getting the end, the blade's getting dull, then it takes a lot more push to push that board through the uh, bandsaw blade to, uh, to cut it. Also keep in mind that the slower you cut, the smoother the cut. Allowing that bandsaw blade more time to go through the, through the wood and actually act like a planer. It's actually, the more time you can spend on a, spend on a, a surface of the wood, the smoother it's going to get that wood. So if you notice when I'm cutting, a lot of my videos I speed up so just for, because of time constraints. But in reality, I run, I run my board through my... Uh, Bandsaw very, very slowly. But again, the slower you, you go, the better the finish is going to be. So again, I hope that helps uh, you uh, resolve some of the questions. This will be a short video, just giving you a point on what blade to use and answer some of your questions. But if you have any other questions, you know, please feel free to give me a call. I'm available anytime to answer your questions and, and take your phone calls. So again, thank you for watching this video.